but I'm really looking forward to cracking on. Should we go catch some fish? Let's do it. It's all about to happen. I am the trout queen. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah! <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Oh my goodness. Hi there guys and welcome back to the Ever and Andy Fishing Channel, it's Andy and Ever again. We managed to get back in for another one. If we look a little bit windswept is because earlier today we went out to try and film a fly fishing vlog and it was like 45, 50 mile an hour winds absolutely wasn't it? Absolutely howling. It was absolutely howling out there, it's actually blown all my hair off my head. You never had any. <laughs> so instead we've come back to finish a review, we started this ages ago didn't we? We did, we started ages and ages and ages ago and been trying to do this and we finally here. <laughs> Ivy, tell us what we're up to today. We are going to review a new rod that we've been playing around for a couple of months, yep. at least a couple of months, um, that I had a really nice pike on recently. Um, that is a Savage Gear, and this is very difficult for me to say with my accent, excellent T3. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> 7 to 25 gram rod. So those of you who have kept up with the Savage Gear stable over the years uh, will be familiar with the XLNT series of rods. I've been making these for absolutely ages. In fact, believe it or not, I believe my first Savage Gear rod was a 3 to 16 gram XLNT, the original one. That's how old you are. That's how, that's how old I am. It was an absolute broomstick, and it's not often you say that about 3 to 16. Jeez, that thing was a powerful rod. It was so stiff, it was so unwieldy. Since then, I've had a few XLNTs, and They've never been bad rods. You'd never describe them as being bad rods. You know, the finish has always been good and they've always been perfectly usable. But they always felt a little bit mid-price, mid-range, middle of the road. You know, they've always been in that price point. Um, and because of that, you always felt like there was a little bit left in the tank out of the XLNT ranges. They just felt like a little bit of a safe bet. And actually that includes the XLNT2 range, the one that followed the originals, they weren't that dissimilar to the original models. They were they were quite similar rods. They looked exactly the same. They still had the cork handle. So you always felt like there was more to come. That's why I was really, really surprised when I saw the first pictures of the XLNT3 start coming through. They looked totally different. They had complete redesign. You can tell Savage Gear have gone right the way back to the board with these. Glamorous model I'd be. It's just As always. found one at the side of us here. They do look really cool. It's a beautiful looking rod, but more it's a totally different looking rod. It, Savage Gear has obviously totally redesigned these rods. And you can tell that not only from the fact they look different, but in actual performance terms as well. What we've got there, your first experience with the XLNT range it's of rods. Stiff. It's very, very different to my first experience with the XLNT rod. And it's the physical differences that make the big difference with these. So in terms of the actual physical features to the rod, I really like the look of it. I'm not gonna lie. It has a double split uh, foam handle, which is quite cool. The first thing that I noticed is actually it's really comfortable to hold, which is always nice when you're gonna go for long sessions. It has a beautiful, gorgeous, dark, like a, a bottle green dark color on it that is quite pretty. And we all, we all like a pretty rod, why not? It also has really nice, classy looking gold tips to the whippings. It has Savage Gear CCS guides that you will have, you will find on most of the Savage Gear rods these days. And a lovely posh green rod bag. Who doesn't want a posh green rod bag? <laughs> I do. It's a be it is a beautiful looking rod, I agree with what IB said there. It's a really pretty looking rod. When you compare it to the previous ranges of the XLNTs, uh, it totally blows them out of the park in terms of the physical looks of it. It's a classy looking piece of kit, isn't it? It is. It's a so really nice looking rod. It's very comfortable rod as well. Even, even holding it right now, I'm like, yeah, it's really comfy. Let's go fishing. <laughs> should we go fishing now? We should go fishing Yes, now. best day ever. <laughs> so yeah, as IB said, really, really beautiful looking rod, very classy, but it's the application of this rod that makes it really stand out. So the previous ranges of the XLNT rods, uh, while they were perfectly good rods, they never really seemed to have much focus about them. They were all pretty much the same action, all on the same level of stiffness, which was very, very stiff. 
there wasn't you know you couldn't pick up a rod out of that range and think I know exactly what I'm going to do with this they were genuine all rounders but the problem with that was that it meant that they weren't brilliant at most things oh yeah yeah I know what you mean and that was the immediate difference for me when we started using this was that even just picking up and giving it the old shot waggle it's so much faster it's good it's solid it's a solid rod so much faster action than the previous models I totally agree with, with IB that it it is solid it holds itself together well but I don't think it's offensively stiff this felt to me like a rod that has been designed by someone as a jigging rod specifically yeah. as a rod to go out yeah. and throw jigs with and I think that's with. what we said the first time when we used it well, because especially for me I, I used it on I can't remember on what I was I think I was fishing for pike on small baits and then as soon as I kind of like started fishing with the rod I was like oh I know what it's going to be good at and that will be jigging yeah. going fishing yeah. somewhere and doing some jigging I mean it is faster action, uh, more responsive, and it's got way more feel than the original XLNTs that, that lends itself, particularly obviously this model, the 8 foot 7 to 25, which is the one we're talking about today, lends itself perfectly for what we got it for, which was uh, longer range jigging, more specifically in rivers where you're having to use a little bit more weight. So as a jigging rod, it really is a lovely piece of kit. I don't think it's a specialist jigging rod, I think it's got more to it than that. But I think of all the rods that we've both used, I think we both said the one it felt the most like was the um, Finesse soft rod. Yes, yeah. It's not a million miles off. Obviously, physically, it's a little bit different. There's a bit more foam around the handle and stuff like that. But it's nearly as fast and it's nearly as responsive, which is saying a lot because that is one of my favourite fishing rods of all time. I take that thing with me absolutely everywhere. This isn't a million miles off, like, is it's it? It's not. It's a it's good solid. Not. It's a good solid jigging rod, but that isn't all it does, I'd say. No, you can you can do everything with this rod. We have done everything with this rod. And there was never a point where you would feel uncomfortable just doing spinning or fishing with lighter pike lures that is just gassed out and like everything was everything that we've done on the rod, the rod handled really well. It it's turned out to be a really good all rounder. We've actually fished this quite a lot with the lighter sizes of the hard four plays, the new hard the new Savage Gate hard four plays. Uh, and it dealt with those absolutely perfectly. It feels like it's got enough power in the blank to hook set properly on a pike. Uh, in fact, well, you said the hooks on a pike pretty nicely with it, seems to remember. Um, yeah, yeah, I, don't, I was just about to say, yeah, on the third go, but that was my mistake. <laughs> yeah, as long as you are patient enough to wait till the pike actually takes your bait, yeah, it will set the hooks really nicely. And in fact, like, I had quite a few fish as well, yeah. didn't I? And yeah, no, it... I can't find anything bad to say about the rod. It was interesting actually watching um, A, the footage of the first time I used it jigging back and mm -hmm. B, the footage of you playing that fish because I actually think that footage gives a really nice idea of just where the action of the rod is. Uh, you can tell when you've got that fish on it, it's bent but it's not fully hooped over to the butt. You can see that the tip and the midsection have gone over but it's held itself together quite nicely. And I think again that lends itself to that kind of range jigging that we wanted to do with it probably more so than anything else but be under no illusions this is a good, good solid all-rounder I think we both felt like the gram rating on it was about right 7 to 25 if that's there or thereabouts perhaps I wouldn't use it just for like 7 grams maybe 10 onwards yeah it felt a little little bit over the top at Don't the get me wrong, light you end. could still use it yeah 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 it felt a little bit over the top of the light end didn't it throw in the medium size hard foreplay which is 30 something grams Perfect. Absolutely fine. It dealt with it perfectly. It felt like I could punch that thing a mile, actually. Um, and I used the snake on that rod as well, yeah. Um, yeah. which is 30 something grams. I can't remember off the top of my head. But again, it's more than what the rod's rated for, and it absolutely chewed that thing alive. It threw it miles. So if you are an all round angler, if you are doing lots of different stuff, don't worry that this is going to be too fast for you. It does all that stuff really well. So there were very few things about this rod that we didn't like. Were, were there? I mean, we we pretty much agreed on most things. Which is a new thing on this <laughs> channel. I I felt personally, and we disagree on this massively, that there was a little bit too much foam on the handle. I be just passes that passes that rod for a second. So, I guess the problem with this is I've got used to the Finesse Softler, which is very very minimal. You know, it's yeah. basically you're basically holding the blank, and there's a little sliver of foam in between you and the blank. Whereas this, you know, there's a bit more stuff. But I, mean, I you, really like you it. Said I think it's really comfortable. It is insanely comfortable. You know, if if there is a rod that you're gonna 
cast for 10 hours a day if you're going to walk miles with yeah, it. Yeah, you want something comfy, don't you? It right? is super It is super comfortable. I just wondered whether perhaps there's a jigging rod, maybe they could have tapered the front of it. I'm really nitpicking here. I'm, I'm looking for problems. Yeah, you're just so big. It's a very comfortable <laughs> handle. Don't listen to it. It's him. a super comfortable handle. Ivy's absolutely right. So, all in all, we really like this, don't we? I think this has very quickly become one of the rods that we grab straight yeah, away. Yeah, that we're most likely going to take when we go fishing. Which is which is pretty good for us because we're pretty fussy about this, aren't we? We generally have rods that we get stuck on, and you know, we kind of that finesse. Obviously, we always take. It's not just that; like we have quite a few rods in our <laughs> in our household. Guilty. We have quite a few rods, so for us to keep going over for the same rod, it's actually quite a big thing because we do have. Quite a wide <laughs> range of fairly broad range from. of rods, haven't we? No, I totally agree. That has just fitted straight into the kit that we are definitely yeah. taking with us, which is as big a compliment as we could probably give it. And because it's so versatile as well, you're not having to take. Oh, I'm going to take a jigging rod. I have to take a rod for hard baits. You know, you can take one rod rather than taking two. Or That's three a different great ones. shout, actually. If you are the type of angler who only wants to take one rod and walk miles there it is it's the excellent c3 the eight foot seven to 25 if you walk in rivers throwing jigs and a few hard baits well done you found it here's the rod perfect i i think uh, the suggested there's a recommended retail price of just over 100 but you guys know by now that it always sells for a little bit lower than that in the shops we're finding them for around about 95 which i think is bloody good value for it's money i think that's value. very reasonable it's you know it's approaching 100 pounds so you'd expect it to be quality and it is. It is. It really is. I, I always thought that it's going to be a way more expensive rod for some reason. Probably because it's just a really lovely, nice rod. It's got the look and feel and versatility of a more expensive rod, hasn't yeah. it? And I think that I think that's a big compliment. I wouldn't throw it in against something like a Mega Bass or a Tenrui or a Graphite Leader Argento, but it's not a 500 quid rod. For sub 100 pounds, if there are many better spinning rods on the market. I haven't seen them. You wouldn't be surprised, wouldn't you, yeah. Yeah, really, really good rod. One thing we probably ought to have mentioned, actually, is that there's nothing about this rod that you couldn't use in salt water. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly, very know, good shout. Light bass rod, lovely. Light rass rod, lovely. Yeah, well, I was just about to say, in fact, when we went um, fishing for the first time, I think, it would have the first thing in my head was that uh, it was it would have been really lovely for us to have this rod when we went fishing for wrasse in August, fishing from the rocks, where you just needed that stiffness a little bit. Yeah, it would yeah. have been a perfect rod. For totally that. agree. I think you guys who are doing a bit of saltwater rock fishing as well as your freshwater fishing, you'll have no issues at all throwing this in the salt water. It'd be absolutely fine. Would that work for top waters as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so right. there you go again. Take just one rod. One for you don't have to take top water jigging and different rods. Just take one rod. Brilliant. Real versatile piece of yeah. kit, isn't it? Very versatile piece of kit. We have got another XLNT3 in the garage. In fact, we've probably got another 30 in there somewhere. We just haven't found them yet. Uh, I've, the other XLNT3 I've got, you might have noticed it in some of the other vlogs. I've got the 150 gram um, Baycaster version for throwing real big pike lures. If you'd like us to give you the lowdown on that one as well, let us know in the comments section and we can do a full review on that as well because obviously that's a very, very different rod Insanely different. to this one. <laughs> And that pretty much sums the rod up, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, I really like it, and really likes it, which is a shame because we only have one of them. <laughs> so the complication starts, but that's pretty much it, guys. We suggest, if you are out uh, there looking for a new rod, I hope this video helps you to decide on at least check